Hello, my name is James Ensler and I teach at Dowling Catholic High School and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to solve a truss. We have the truss in front of us here, so if you'd like to copy that down, that would probably help. Um, and today we are measuring our forces in newtons. Um, and so we have a 15 newton force here, a 100 newton force here, a 65 newton force here. We have a pin and a roller and all the dimensions that you should need. This is three, seven, six high, four wide there, four wide there. Now the very first thing that you want to do when you're solving a truss is to see if it's statically determinant. This is really asking, can it be solved? Uh, and so we use this formula, 2j equals m plus r. Now j is the number of joints. Any place where two or more members meet is a joint, kind of like a vertex. m stands for members, that would be like the number of beams, and r is the number of reaction forces. 115 and 65 are the original action forces, um, and the forces pushing back up against them are the reaction forces. And so with a pin, we have two reaction forces, one here and one here, because it's being held in place there. And with a roller, just one reaction force. So in total, we have three reaction forces. So to complete this formula, 2 times j, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 joints. And for members, m, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 members. Make sure that you count these as two separate members. It's not all just one long one. Plus, there are three reaction forces, because we have 1, 2 for the pin, and one for the roller. So 10 equals 10, and yes, this can be solved. So again, 2j equals m plus r. We have five joints, seven members, three reaction forces. 2 times 5 is 10. 7 plus 3 is 10. It can be solved. So the next thing that you're going to do after determining whether it's statically determinant is solve to find the x external reaction forces. We already know the original action forces. That's the 100 newtons, 15 newtons, and 65 newtons. We need to find what are the reaction forces from the pin and the roller. And we're going to use three formulas for external reaction forces. The sum of the forces in the x direction those have to equal zero. The sum of the forces in the y direction also should equal zero. And the sum of the forces of the moment should equal zero as well. All right, And they all equal zero because we assume from the very beginning that the truss is uh, at static equilibrium, that it's not moving. Um, or yeah, I suppose it could be moving at a constant velocity. And I've just realized that we haven't named any of our joints. All right. Um, if they're already named, use those letters. If not, let's name them ourselves. So I'll call this A up here. We'll say that's B. This is C, D, and E. All right. So when I'm calculating the sum of the forces in the x direction, um, I need to look at my diagram and figure out what forces are traveling just straight left right that is the x direction so we have this one here 15 okay so with our external reaction forces we know 0 has to equal 15 plus what else do we have um, here this right here this force well we have to give that a name and so what we're going to call it is reaction force of A in the X direction. So I'm going to call it RAX, the reaction force of A in the X direction. And so I'm going to say uh, that 
RAX is also a force. And if we look up here, uh, we do not have any other forces that are going directly left, right, horizontal. So we can actually solve this. Uh, if I subtract the 15 from both sides, the reaction force of A in the x direction is going to equal negative 15 newtons of force. So what I'll do is I'll go back up to my diagram and I'll just write equals negative 15 newtons. And so that actually means that this, even though we drew the arrow going to the right, uh, it's actually pulling at it from the left, but that's okay. I'm gonna choose to leave my arrow like that and just label it negative 15, and anyone who looks at that should know that it actually means it's going the other way. All right, let's uh, look at the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. So what do we have going in the y direction? Well, we have this force here, and we're gonna call that the reaction force of A, because we're still at joint A, in the y direction, so RAY. And since RAY is going up, it's positive RAY. Now we have a couple others. What else do we have? We have negative 65, and it's negative because it's going down, and in the y direction, down is negative. So minus 65. Up here, we also have negative 100. And then lastly, here we have a reaction force that we drew going up, and so we're going to call that REY and that's gonna be positive because we drew it going up. So plus R E Y. Now and we'll add those negatives together, and I'm gonna also rearrange this so that the R's are next to each other. R A Y plus R E Y minus 165, and then I'm gonna move that 165 over. We'll add 165 to both sides. And I have 165 equals R A Y plus REY, but I do not have enough information to solve that right now. I would need to know either of these. So we're gonna have to come back to that one, and we're gonna go to the moment force. Now, you might remember that a moment is a force times a distance, and we used moments when studying levers. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a pivot point, kind of like the fulcrum of a lever. And usually, you pick the pivot point that's the same as where the pin is. And so this is where the pin is, and so I'm gonna pick A. And so what I'm going to write is the sum of the force of the moments at A equals zero, and I highlighted there that that's A. So zero equals. All right, and what you're going to do for each force up here, both the reaction forces and the action forces, uh, you are going to multiply the force times the distance. And when you measure the distance, we want to measure the perpendicular distance. So you want to measure perpendicularly to the vector that's drawn. And then the force is going to be whatever number is listed there, or some of these we don't know. And it's going to be positive or negative depending on whether it travels clockwise or counterclockwise. So. Um, and I'll show you what that means, but first let's write this down. It's going to be positive if it's going counterclockwise, and it's going to be negative if it's going clockwise. So we'll set this up, zero equals. Okay, so we're going to go through each of the moment forces. Uh, if we start with 65 here, um, that's 65, and the perpendicular distance to that vector is three. And is 65 going clockwise or counterclockwise around point A? Well, if we imagine there to be a lever here and it's going with a downward force, that's going to be going clockwise. And clockwise is negative. So we're going to say, it doesn't matter where you put the negative, I'm gonna say negative 65 times three. The force times the distance, it's positive if it's going counterclockwise, it's negative if it's going clockwise, okay? That's just one of ours. Uh, how about this 15 up here? It has a perpendicular distance of, well, we have to look over here, six, okay? And um, is it going clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, just like the 65, if that force is pushing like that, 
then that's going to be clockwise. So it's going to be negative. So negative 15 and the distance was 6. All right. And uh, we have some other forces. This 100 newtons of force, it too is 6. All right, we also have this 100 newtons of force. It has a perpendicular distance of 4. And then what's this distance here? Well, this is 7 and 3, so the whole thing is 10. And if this is 4, 4, this must be 2 over here. I might just put that in so I don't forget. That's 2. So the distance of this force to here, and remember you're doing the perpendicular force. It's not 6. It's perpendicular here. The distance is 4 plus 2, 6. I guess that is the same, but that's just by coincidence. All right. So distance of 6, 100, and is it positive or negative? Well, if it's going this way and our fulcrum is A, that again is going to be negative. So minus 100 times 6. All right. And then we have this force right here, REY. We don't know what it is. Um, but hopefully you can see right away that this is going counterclockwise. So therefore, it's going to be positive, And its distance, perpendicular difference, is 7 plus 3, so 10. So positive 10. And then we don't know what the force is. So we're just going to leave it REY. So plus 10 REY. Now, you might ask, what about RAX and RAY? Don't we have to do the moment calculation with them? Well, you can. That's certainly allowed. But you're going to come up with 0 for each one of those. And the reason why is because our distance from point A is 0. So no matter what the force is, if you multiply it by 0, it goes away. So here's what we have. And this we can solve because we only have one unknown value. All right, so. 0 equals, I might get out my calculator here. I'm just going to go ahead and type in negative 65 times 3 minus 15 times 6 minus 100 times 6. And I get negative 885. So negative 885 plus 10 times REY. We're going to move the 885 over by adding 885 to both sides. And you don't have to show all those little steps. I just am for those who it helps. And then to get REY by itself, you need to divide by 10. And we get our answer. REY equals 885 divided by 10. You don't need a calculator to know that. That is 88.5 newtons of force. All right, so we can go up and mark that here. Equals 88. 0.5 newtons of force. And then, remember a couple minutes ago when we were solving here and we said we had to stop because we didn't know one of them. Well, now we do. We know that REY is 88.5. And so we subtract 88.5 from both sides and we will be able to figure out what RAY is. One sixty-five minus eighty-eight point five, seventy-six point five newtons of force. I'm gonna go ahead and circle that or put a box around it because that is one of my important answers. So, REY equals seventy-six point five newtons of force. Now, as you might be able to tell, this is getting a little messy. Um, it's hard to tell what's what. So after you draw the external forces, it would be a good idea to uh, re-sketch um, after you do all these calculations with the external reaction forces. So that's what I'm going to do next.